ranking the 10 best starting fives if every player played for the team they were drafted by. The idea is simple, we're looking at current players, and to make the list, a player has to be playing in the league today. So let's get right into it, and we start first with the honorable mention. The Bucks with Malcolm Brogdon, Patrick McCaw, Giannis, don't need to say his last name, Jabari Parker, and Irsan Eliasova. At first, I almost had this Bucks team at number 8 because I was overrating Giannis. I mean, having Giannis is good enough to put them in the honorable mentions, but you look at the team as a whole, and it's basically worse than the Bucks starting lineup that they use today. So this is where they ended up. Number 10, the Grizzlies with Kyle Lowry, Mike Conley, Damari Carroll, Kevin Love, and Jaron Jackson Jr. This team's got three all-star caliber players, but they only rank in at number 10 because Lowry and Conley play a similar style in the fact that they're both playmakers, and Kevin Love and Jaron Jackson play a similar style in the fact that they're both stretch big men. And then they have Damari Carroll for defense. And of course all these guys can score, but they don't have a big time scorer that can really go and make a shot whenever the team needs it. Like I said, Conley and Lowry are great playmakers, but they're just missing that go-to guy. That if they had one, it would put them a lot higher on the list. Number 9, The Kings with De'Aaron Fox, Isaiah Thomas, Tyreek Evans, Demarcus Cousins, and Hassan Whiteside. Now they also have four players playing two positions, but each set of guys has different styles than the other. Like they're two point guards. Now it wouldn't be the first time Isaiah Thomas had to play with another point guard, so I'm sure he could make it work assuming he ever got healthy. He could focus more on the scoring side, while De'Aaron focuses more on running the offense like he's been doing this year. And I mean they're better off with two point guards anyways, instead of opting for their best shooting guard that they've drafted recently in Ben McLemore. But with their two point guards, they also have two centers, which is a little bit more of a problem and if they had more players to play more positions they could possibly rank higher but they don't so they only rank in at number nine but i'd assume in this situation for him cousins would play power forward for his ability to shoot and spread the floor and whiteside would play center since he can only play around the basket anyways and even though demarcus is coming off that achilles tear for now he still ranks higher for this spot than a guy like marvin bagley and then tyreek evans it would be their fifth man on the team that's their all-around player that would hold the team together as their small forward Number 8, the Timberwolves with Ricky Rubio, Zach Levine, Seti Osman, Lori Markkinen, and Carl Anthony Towns. Originally I had this squad ranked at number 10, but after thinking about it, this is where they deserve to be. Because they have one former All-Star, and two guys that are just a step or two away from becoming one themselves. And these guys fit together great when you think about it. Rubio can be a guy to get everyone involved, Levine can focus solely on scoring, Osman can be their all-around player, Markkinen can stretch the floor, and Towns can dominate the paint. All that gives them a solid, but not great defense, and an overall great offensive game. Number 7, the Pacers with Lance Stevenson, Kawhi Leonard, Karis LeVert, Paul George, and Miles Turner. We definitely got some weaknesses here, but the two MVP candidates make up for it. Lance Stevenson is definitely no starting point guard, but he was the only option. And then we got three guys that all play small forward. But if there is any position where it's okay to have multiple players at, it's small forward. And luckily for them, all these guys can play shooting guard just as well. And with Kawhi and PG-13's ability to guard the one through the four, it helps make up for it. And then a young guy like Levert is gonna help do a little bit of everything. Again, they'd have to play small ball with Georgia power forward, but they'd still have Miles Turner to get easy dunks around the basket and hold down the paint on defense. So I mean, even though this team has its weaknesses, they've got the right guys on their squad to make up for it. The Pacers have done a decent job at drafting players, but unfortunately for them, they've only got one of these guys left on their roster. Number 6, the Chicago Bulls with Derrick Rose, Jimmy Butler, Gary Harris, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Yusuf Nurkic. Now this is a good mix of players. There's the new Derrick Rose that's finally returned to as close to his MVP form as we've seen, and that's still averaging over 18 a game and shooting over 41% from 3. There's Jimmy Butler who has a chance of not fitting in with any of these guys, but will lock down the other team's best player and can carry his own weight on offense. They got the great all-around game from Gary Harris, LaMarcus Aldridge's post-game and ability to stretch the floor, and then a guy like Nurkic, who they can run pick and rolls with and can protect the paint. Now to me this seems like a weird pairing of guys, but when you think about it, they all fit together pretty well as a starting five. Their one downside may be their ability to shoot consistently, but besides that, the team's pretty good. Sadly for Chicago though, none of their best draft picks currently play for them. Number 5, 
the Nuggets with Jamal Murray, Donovan Mitchell, Carmelo Anthony, Nikola Jokic, and Rudy Gobert. Now here's a great team. The weak point of it right now would clearly be Melo, and I did say players that are only playing in the NBA today, but Melo's still technically on the Bulls, so he still counts. And I could have put a guy like Michael Porter Jr. in the spot, but he hasn't played an NBA game yet, so just for that I left him out. But besides that, Jamal Murray and Donovan Mitchell have the ability to lead the team on offense, Carmelo's there, Jokic has the skills and abilities to play power forward and let Gobert hold down the paint and lead the team on defense. Now Denver only has two of these guys on their current roster and it's got to be rough for Nuggets fans to see that they drafted Utah's two best young players and then traded them both away to the same team. But then you look back and see that they're still number one in the west and it's all good. Number five, the Pelicans with Chris Paul, J.R. Smith, Buddy Heald, Anthony Davis, and Nerlens Noel. Even though CP3 is getting up there in age and is starting to show signs of his game declining, this lineup's still worthy of the spot. And I'd say J.R. Smith is the weakness, but he'll be fine unless they're playing in game one of the finals, which shouldn't be a problem since Chris Paul and Anthony Davis have never been to the finals. <laughs> No, but seriously, JR is the weak point of the lineup. But at small forward, Buddy Heald's a perfect fit for the team. As a standout three-point shooter and a guy that can create his own shot. And then Anthony Davis is going to dominate as always. And at levels we've never seen, he's being led through plays and pick and rolls with a leader like Chris Paul. And the duo of these two guys is really the main thing that's landed the Pelicans this high. Oh, and then you have Nerlens Noel, who's an okay center and can finally get that block party with Anthony Davis that he's always wanted. It's gonna be a shot blocking party when I get down there. Shot blocking party when I get down there. Shot blocking party. <laughs> Number 4, the 76ers with Ben Simmons, Lou Williams, Andre Iguodala, Nikola Vucevic, and Joel Embiid. Now we're getting into the elite teams. You still got today's young core of Simmons and Embiid, and one of the biggest criticisms to today's Phillies team is that they never have enough shooting. But having Vucevic and Lou Williams really helps make up for that, and the fact that Lou can create his own shot and help run the offense helps everyone out, especially Ben Simmons. And then on the defensive side, they have Simmons, Embiid, and Iguodala to lock down the other team's best players. And then even though Vucevic and Embiid both play center, they'd play better together than most centers would. Embiid's made it clear that he wants his role to be in the paint, so Vucevic would have to play more as a stretch four, and with him shooting 37% from three, that shouldn't be a problem. Phillies had a ton of high picks over the years, and if they all turned out to be as good as they were supposed to be, with guys like Markel Fultz and Jaleel Okafor, this team could be ranked a lot higher. As a matter of fact, I almost put this team at number two, but this lineup's not really too far from the lineup they have now. Lou Williams isn't a huge improvement from JJ Redick, Andre Iguodala is a big downgrade from Jimmy Butler, and Nikola Vucevic is a huge upgrade from Wilson Chandler, but not enough to earn them a higher ranking. Number 3, the Warriors with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Vince Carter, Harrison Barnes, and Draymond Green. This is basically the core group of guys that led the 73-9 and season. You're just replacing Andrew Bogut from that year for Vince Carter. Except now they've all gotten better. Well, I mean, except Draymond because he's still having one of the worst years of his career and ignoring the fact that Vince Carter is 42 years old. But even both of those things couldn't hurt this team too much. Barnes was only putting up 10 points a game when these guys played together, but now he averages close to 18 a game. Steph's playing just as good, if not better, than he was that season, and Clay's definitely become an even better shooter. This would all mean that Barnes would have to play power forward, which he's basically done since he's been in Dallas anyways, and Draymond would have to play center, which he's already proven he can do in the past. Number 2, the Cavs with Kyrie Irving, Andrew Wiggins, Joe Harris, LeBron James, and Tristan Thompson. Now this is a tricky one to rank, because the LeBron and Kyrie Irving Cavs team beat the 73-9 Warriors in the 2016 Finals. But for this video, the Warriors got an improved Harrison Barnes, and this Cavs team swapped out Kevin Love and J.R. Smith for Andrew Wiggins and Joe Harris, which would be a pretty fair trade. They get the athleticism of Wiggins and the great shooting from Joe Harris. LeBron would have to be their power forward, but he'd still have the playmaking of Kyrie, the occasional all-around game of Wiggins, Joe Harris to always pass the ball out to, and the somewhat inside presence of Tristan Thompson. But even with all that being said, considering how much LeBron's defense has dropped off since then, I still think we'd have to say that the Warriors would have a better lineup. 
So for the first time ever on this channel, we're switching up rankings mid-video. So the Warriors get the number two spot and the Cavs are gonna take the number three spot. Now the reason I didn't just rank these teams there to start the video was because we needed context from both teams to make a final decision. But on to number one, where there's definitely no argument to be had with the Oklahoma City Thunder. With Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Serge Ibaka, and Steven Adams. OKC's getting the best players out of the draft out of all the current players. And their lineup has three league MVPs and three future Hall of Famers. Now, there might not be enough ball to go around for these three guys alone, but we'll assume it works. And we did get to see four of these guys play together already, but that was before they really had any success. So with all these guys in their primes, and then you add Steven Adams in the mix, it just doesn't get any better. Russ is now a walking triple-double, Harden's a walking 50-point game, and KD's a walking snake. But seriously, they're the only team on the list with two former MVPs, and they've got three of them. Looking at this though, might still be hard for Thunder fans, thinking about what could have been. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.